Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the channel we are going to continue with our series of Ship Tree Review, and of course we did last time the Galente Federation. Uh, we're going to continue clockwise, uh, meaning today we're going to touch on the Kaldari State, and we're going to cover the ships themselves, um, the skills, the roles, the preferred weaponry and tank, and that's pretty much it. Basically, you'll have an understanding of what the Kalari ships are capable of and how to basically fly them around and what roles they're good at. Before we start into our subject, remember to like and subscribe if you find this content useful and if you want to help support the channel, there's a link in the description for some uh, cheap donations. Thank you very much and uh, going forwards, Kaldari State. The Kaldari primarily focuses on shield tanking. All the ships are shield tank. If you take a look at their uh, attributes, you'll find that most of the resistances are focused on shield and the most uh, HP can be found in the shield section, not in the armor. Now, the preferred weaponry. Well, we could say in very big terms that the preferred weaponry is missiles are missiles but there is also hybrid turrets uh, sorry rail guns so we have rail guns combined with missiles as primary now probably the the rail guns combination comes from uh due to the fact maybe a possibly common heritage with the galente federation because we all know kaldari and galente used to share the same planet they probably swap some more things than uh, normal people would do, but let's move on. So, down to the ship tree itself. We've got the rookie ship, the noob ship, it's the Ibis. Um, pretty standard like all the other noob ships from all the other factions. Small railgun damage, 15% pay, frigate command bonus level, and 5% shield. Now, going into the frigates of tier 2. We've got the Condor. This is a flimsy, fast reliable ship. Uh, its role will be seen upwards as we go through, uh, through the tiers, uh, aiming for that special tackle interceptor uh, role. We've got the Stasis Web Fire Capacitor Need per roll bonus, and we've got Small Missile Torpedo Damage per Frigate Command bonus level. The Merlin. It's another Tech 2 Frigate, and it has a Small Railgun Damage Bonus per Frigate Command Bonus, and of course Shield Resistance 4%. It's a good and sturdy ship for those of you who prefer turrets over missiles, uh, you might as well go with the Merlin in the early stages. Merlin tends to focus later on at the advanced versions of this ship on Assault Frigates. Um, Moving on to tier 3, we've got the Mighty Castro, which is an excellent kiting missile boat. Small missile torpedo operation bonus per level, you've got 8% small missile torpedo damage and 5% small missile torpedo velocity, meaning it can shoot further than other missile boats. Thanks to that velocity bonus, uh, combine it with the missile flight time and you get a decent range to kite almost anything uh, up your, up to your class and even higher, you can also kite some destroyers, uh, believe it or not. Also, frigate command bonus per level, 5% flight velocity, meaning it moves faster. Moving on to tier uh, 3, the second um, frigate on the line is the Heron. Now, again, as other frigates in the same uh, category that uses scan resolution and uh, scanning bonuses, there's no scanners in the game yet, so uh, we'll probably see this as a uh, as a scanning role in the near future when uh, probably D-Scan will hit as a feature on the game and also the probe launches hopefully soon because I really like exploration. Um, so we've got scanner resolution bonuses and 5% flight velocity uh, moves faster. This ship will I tend to advance later on up the tier level into covert ops and uh, basically just uh, I think it also has yep uh, it also has the uh, mobility trait and the cargo hold trait uh, we've got the cargo hold capacity capacity sort of like the Imicus from the Galente 1000 cubic meters an excellent ship fast mobile to um, basically carry 
those crates for the delivery system, you know, carry stuff, haul, haul your stuff from point A to point B. Also on the tier 3 we've got the Cormorant. Uh, do mind <laughs> that the Kondari ships are mostly named on mythical birds or flying, mythical flying, flying creatures. Now Cormorant is actually a um, a nice interesting bird that we also have here in Romania uh, and it's diving for fish in the Danube <laughs> from quite a high so it, it, the, the design of the ship is is pretty interesting and basically the design of all Kaldari ships are interesting and based into um, real life um, birds or mythical creatures the Cormorant, I forgot to talk about its uh, bonuses, small railgun optimal range uh, and small ra railgun damage, uh, per small railgun operation bonus and optimal range. It's a destroyer, has three turret hard points, you can fit three railguns, uh, so it's pretty decent on what it does. Moving on to tier 4, we've got the Condor 2. The Condor 2, uh, as I mentioned, the Condor will focus later on in interceptor roles. We've got already 80% stasis work fire capacity need and warp disruptor capacity need. Excellent as a tackle ship, 10% afterburner velocity bonus and 12% uh, uh, small missile torpedo damage per frigate command bonus um, per level. A good sufficient amount of damage, uh, you can catch stuff with this and also it moves faster. I'm not sure about its kiting capabilities, it's definitely um, not that good of a kiter as the Kestrel is. This one does move faster, but it lacks the range to do so. It has damage, but uh, it's mostly to get rid of drones or other tackle that might want to tackle you. Moving on to the Griffin. Now the Griffin has suffered a redesign, a major redesign. Uh, back in the days of Evil Line, the Griffin looked hideous, and now it has this sleek and awesome design. It looks like all the antennas and stuff pointing in all directions, because it's a jamming ship. Of course, uh, like all other support ships in uh, in terms of electronic warfare, uh, the electronic most of the electronic warfare equ equipment is not yet in the game, so the Griffin suffers from that. Right now, it's basically unusable. Uh, it has electronic jammer strength per electronic warfare level and 5% electronic jammer optimal range. What jamming means? That's precisely exactly that. Uh, it jams enemy ships using uh, jamming modules. Uh, what, what happens when an enemy ship is jammed? It loses all targets. Uh, it is unable to target something else until the jammer effect wears off, which is basically your cycle, your, your jammer cycle duration. Moving on to the tier 4 destroyers, we've got the Korax Torpedo Missile Boat. 25% damage, roll bonus, missile torpedo velocity, and uh, per level of small missile torpedo operation, we've got 10% small missile torpedo damage, okay, and small missile torpedo explosion velocity, meaning uh, it's excellent against fast ships because the explosion velocity is one of the key factors. Uh, in how you do damage against fast and agile ships, meaning the explosion uh, radius and explosion velocity catches up with the ship, so even if the missile presumably explodes behind the ship, the ship still gets to be damaged by it. Destroy command bonus per level, 5% stasis web fire optimal range, and 5% energy Nosferatu optimal range. The Corax is an excellent missile boat, sort of like how the Argos is with drones, and it's got the same uh, support attributes and bonuses for the Web and the Nosferatu. Actually, I think the Argos has for a uh, neutralizer. Oh. Moving on, we've got the Corax Trainer, which is a dumbed down version of the Corax. We've got 25% missile torpedo velocity as a roll bonus, but 6 just 6% in small missile torpedo damage and you've got three hard points uh, also this three hard points okay the Korax trainer seems to be a bit better than what the Algos trainer is in comparison to the standard Algos um, the support roll bonuses stasis web fire optimal range and Nosferatu are still there and 
the Cormorant 2 on attack level 4. We've got small railgun optimal range, similar bonuses to how the Korax behaves, and 2.5% small railgun damage and tracking speed 7.5% per small railgun operation bonus. You can see there's a blend between the Galanta and the Kaldari. So basically, if you train um, railgun turrets, ultimately uh, you can fly both uh, Galente ships that use turrets and additionally as a bonus you can also fly the Kaldari ships that use railgun turrets so that's a good trade-off moving on to tier 5 we've got the Heron Covert Ops with max Covert Ops cloaking devices plus one meaning it can fit a Covert Ops cloaking device just like the Imicus uh, it has that decent cargo hold bonus of 1500 cubic meters uh, cargo hull capacity extra 5% per frigate command bonus and we've got frigate defense upgrade bonus 7.5% scan resolution and scan strength again probing uh, is not in the game yet but will probably be uh, until then this ship can be used uh, as a covert ops hauler meaning you can move stealthily until you reach your destination safely uh, moving on to the Bantam, which is the first support, actual working support frigate from the Kaldari in uh, similar ways as the Navitas is for the Galente, meaning it's a repair, it's a logistic uh, ship. It offers bonuses to repair uh, modules, remote shield booster, optimal range, 40% as a roll bonus, and an additionally 200% uh, remote shield booster accuracy follows, meaning range, range and remote repping. Remote shield operation bonus per level, uh, we've got 15% shield booster capacity needed, remote shield booster capacity, capacity needed, and minus 5% remote shield booster activation time. So it's a reduction in capacity need and activation time, meaning it cycles faster while uh, eats up less uh, capacitor which is your ship's battery for minus 4% signature radius so it can be targeted harder it's harder to, to pinpoint and to get a lock on uh, plus if I'm not mistaken the signature radius also affects missile damage uh, please please confirm that in, in the comments below I may be wrong here Moving on to the Cormorant Navy issue, on the tech level 5 we've got uh, a very good variant of the Cormorant, small railgun optimal range 25% and 5% small railgun damage and 7.5 railgun optimal range. Now why is this better than the standard Cormorant? It has 4 weapon slots, meaning you can go with 4 railguns, the bonuses are pretty much the same, uh, the only advantage is that extra weapon, meaning <laughs> an additional 25% from the actual uh, the standard Cormorant in damage dealing. We've got the Cormorant Guardian, which is the first Guardian ship you will see in the tree. Uh, Guardian, we've talked about this, uh, is basically that, like the tank ship. Uh, it has some perks that allow it to, uh, in, in case of armor, allow it to, sh uh, to share damage, um, actually to collect damage from the nearby fleet members. In case of shield, we've got 25 small railgun optimal range, uh, max shield field modules. Now shield field modules actually create a bubble um, surrounding, uh, it has a radius and it surrounds the nearby uh, friendly vessels and it has some HP and resistances and basically the incoming damage is absorbed by that shield field and probably that's why most people recognize that shield tanking and the shield field technology is actually better than the armor link um, like sharing damage because in here you don't uh, no, nobody takes damage if I'm not mistaken please correct me if I'm wrong uh, I didn't manage to get a look at all the items and I don't know if they suffered at least the shield field module module if it suffered any modifications after being launched um, moving on to the first iteration of cruisers uh, we've got the car caracal trainer now this looks like a Klingon bird of prey and it it really feels like one, especially when uh, somebody else is looking at it while being shot at. 5% <laughs> mid medium missile torpedo velocity and 5% flight velocity, meaning the missiles go far, uh, further away. Uh, of course, combine that with uh, the, the, the flight time of the missiles themselves and you get a decent range. This is a good kiting 
cruiser. Uh, you can pull off some insane stuff in PvE with the Caracal. You can go, I think, in numbers of tens of kilometers away from the actual NPCs, firing at them and avoiding, basically avoiding any type of damage. And of course, in case of turrets, and I also think in case of of, uh, of missiles if you if you're trying to go against Grissus. but this is the most remarkable ship in the game when doing PvE as of now in in as in low cost ships the Caracal trainer by far is the best one um, why I didn't go with Kaldari well because I kind of like drones and you can basically do the same thing while also switching ammo. Remember, ammo is not yet in the game, so missiles do a spread of 25% damage across all resistances, uh, meaning missiles do fairly, but drones do can do focused damage because you can just swap drones with whatever enemy NPCs you're fighting against, and you can get uh, like um, explosive damage drones out to get rid of armors and and uh, and NPCs tanking on armor, uh, or you can swap them with some acolytes or some. Uh, drones, actually Amar drones that deal EM damage against NPCs that tank on shield. So, moving on, we've got the better version, the standard version of the Caracal. We've got medium missile torpedo velocity 5% and minus 3% medium missile torpedo activation time. This is the extra bonus as in terms of damage because it cycles faster. You shoot faster with it uh, and it's as opposed to the Caracal trainer. Moving on to tier 6, we've got the Bantam 2, which is basically an upgrade of the Bantam standard. Again, more bonuses on remote repping. Uh, we're going into the Manticore, which is a very nice looking ship. It, it, the hull is based on the Kestrel, and uh, Manticore is like your stealth bomber. It has minus 90% torpedo power grid need, meaning you can fit big, big modules, uh, as in battleship sized modules if I'm not mistaken. No, actually it's cruiser sized modules, mini medium torpedo, yeah, it's cruiser, battle cruiser sized modules. Cloaking device reactivation delay minus 50% and cover tops cloaking device. Cloaking devices lock delay meaning once you uh, uncloak or decloak you can target your opponent faster, you don't suffer from that decloaking sickness <laughs> like all the other cloaky ships. Uh, medium torpedo thermal damage and kinetic damage per missile torpedo up, uh, upgrade um, per level. And of course, medium torpedo flight velocity, meaning you can, uh, with this, it keeps the, the, the base stats as in a Kestrel would do, and you can just kite stuff and uh, finish them off with heavy, heavy damage. This is best run in. Uh, in small gangs, you all decloak and you basically just destroy uh, that target before reinforcements arrive. You cloak back and run the hell out of there. Moving on to the Korax Sniper. The Korax uh, takes a turn for the advanced version and turns into sniper mode. Uh, minus a plus 25% missile torpedo velocity, it can shoot a lot farther away. 7.5% small missile torpedo damage per advanced small missile torpedo upgrade level and 10% uh, small missile torpedo explosion velocity, meaning it can catch uh, fast and agile interceptors, so interceptors beware when trying to tackle sniper ships, especially the Korax snipers. Moving on to cruisers on the tier 6, we've got the MOA Trainer, um, which is the dumbed down version of the MOA, which is the cruiser uh, using hybrid, uh, sorry, railgun rail, rail turrets. We've got 4% uh, shield resistances, medium railgun damage, and medium railgun accuracy fall off. Um, and this is the standard MOA. The standard MOA, uh, sleek looking design by the way. Uh, we've got uh, the bonuses are in damage, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's 2% medium railgun damage. They've got the same amount of high slots of fit weapons, but the standard version has 5% medium railgun damage, which means double. So if you have comm cruiser command uh, in level 5 with these, uh, the, the MOA trainer, you will be having uh, 2.5. That's 
my math is not working out this hour, a 12.5% damage increase, but with the standard mower, you've got 25% damage increase. Of course, Caracal Navy issue, which is even a better form of the Caracal, uh, has a more that awesome damage plus uh, that extra high slot, five high slots instead of just four, so it can fit an extra launcher for some extra, extra DPS flight velocity. Also with the scanner resolution and scanner strength, as I mentioned with the Galente, I think they're referring to being able to lock on ships faster as in to catch them of course moving on we've got the merlin assault as i mentioned merlin transitions itself to assault ships five seconds damage control activation time this means tank uh 10 warp drive signature radius penalty and warp, warp drive capacity need meaning it can very well fit micro warp drives uh, with reduced penalties and of course 7.5 small railgun damage and railgun uh, accuracy fall off with some shield resistances this is a railgun boat moving on to the corex assault missile torpedo velocity and damage control activation time bonuses uh, again with the kiting but again with the assault thingy is it a kiter or is it is it a sniper or is it an assault assault whenever i hear assault uh, i tend to understand brawling so something that goes re real deep and up to its elbows and just starts beating left and right um correct assault feels more like an upgraded version of the sniper and not actually like a brawler but i may be wrong so please feel free to comment if you have uh made it in the betters and managed to fly this out and test it i didn't the osprey the osprey is the logistics cruisers uh 200 remote shield uh, boosts the optimal range and effective range 100 as roll boosters uh plus some group capacitor transmit effective range uh, of course as mentioned in the galente video logistics cruisers tend to have some capacitor link between them so they can generate extra cap uh, i'm not sure if this applies here uh, someone may confirm i think sovereign already tried it i don't know i uh, can't remember exactly the outcome but it's supposed to keep your capacitor alive uh, for as long as possible i'm not sure if they become cap stable or not Blackbird Covert Ops, Max Covert Ops Cloaking Device and uh, Electronic Jammer Strength. This is your cloaky, nasty asshole ship. <laughs> it decloaks and suddenly you start losing your targets. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> the jammers are very effective. Uh, we'll, we'll see when these launch in EVE Echoes, but from my experience, I've been a uh, jammer pilot in EVE Online for a long time. And everybody feel, fears the Falcon, <laughs> also called the Falcon Punch, because it hits you where it hurts the most. And we've got the Moa Guardian, which is the tank version of the Moa, uh, with some decent uh, shield resistances and uh, uh, ooh, railgun capacitor need, max shield feed modules plus one, and railgun tracking speed. But this is not something that you mostly want to to do damage with of course you can see the three high slots uh, you mostly focus into those five low slots you need to tank with this and protect your teammates ferox the first battle cruiser that you'll be encountering on the kondari tech tree 25 uh, medium railgun optimal range and railgun accuracy fall off for all the roll bonus can fit command burst modules to help the fleet medium railgun damage and railgun optimal range the ferox is a railgun boat moving on to tech level eight the condor interceptor this is taken to the extreme warp disrupt field immunity level it's immune to uh warp bubbles so in in the near future uh the interdictors will receive um warp bubbles to be uh, launched in space and there will also be uh warp bubble interdiction uh, spheres that you'll be able to anchor in space and prevent people from warping out or just make them uh, be derailed when they're warping between, between gates. 
So the Condor Interceptors basically ignore that and they warp right through the uh, warp disruption fields. Also has some warp scramble strength for some, for some extra, extra uh, warp scrambling capabilities, preventing ships from warping away. Says so warp fire, optimal range and warp drive signature reduced penalty. Uh, of course, this ship you would want to fit it with a micro warp drive for some maximum efficiency and speed. <clears throat> Moving on to the Caracal Sniper. The, uh, the Caracal here was taken to the extreme with more bonuses on range and uh, I think we will see the first fleet of Caracal Snipers uh, clashing uh, because it's going to be cool. They're fast, the Caracal are cruiser sized vessels, they're fast with micro warp drives or even with afterburners. Um, have a logistic uh, ship. Uh, uh, couple of logistic ship with the fleet and making sure their uh, their buffer tank remains intact while they'll do, they do excellent damage from long range positions now the missiles may not be instant but you will not know when they will all hit it's going to cause massive damage and probably uh, it will be just the same as any alpha fleet instant melt for anything you won't even be able to warp out you'll just be a bit laggish and then oh capsule moa 2 guardian an improved version of the moa guardian with more resistances and more tracking speed i don't know why because this ship should be focused on tanking four percent resistances on shield is the same bonus uh we have six low slots as opposed to five but maybe the base stats are a bit higher we could say that but it does not justify uh, the, uh, the tech advancement. I mean, the bonuses into the Guardian area, they're so small. You get more tracking speed. Why? In, this ship is, was not meant for DPS and for dealing damage. It was meant for tanking. So you should better have some bonuses here for tanking. Uh, this is some suggestions that you guys might want to put out. I'll be putting out some myself. Uh, we'll definitely see and will uh, witness some rebalances in the near future once people start building these higher tier uh, ships and they start moving with them and they say oh well this is what i expected <laughs> this is crappier than the previous tech version okay moving on we've got the naga which is the the uh, attack battle cruiser of the kaldari uh, it's a railgun boat but it can fit battleship sized rail guns uh, yeah <laughs> that is insane they basically work like glass cannons uh, but they can do a decent amount of damage in a fleet with brawling capabilities they can still tank a bit because they're battle cruisers uh, they also move uh, faster i think than the ferox they have some uh, uh, base attributes that are a bit better than the standard battle cruiser they can fit um, battleship sized uh, weapons but they what they g gain with these uh, decent uh, decent bonuses they lack in a tank one survivability so once something gets really really close to you and starts orbit pretty tightly you're fucked be mindful of that and we've got the Drake the mighty Drake seven ter uh, missile uh, hard points it's basically the standard doctrine for drakes that's why it's called the drake fleet we've got drakes with missiles uh, can i bring my drake you can you can look up memes on the, on on google <laughs> regarding drakes they're, they're, they're pretty much everywhere the drake is like a powerhouse a battle cruiser with missiles that can do all sorts of stuff bve pvp they're good at, at anything well not mining but you get the idea, you get the picture, and they're pretty sturdy too. With five low slots, they can tank. Oh shit. Uh, moving on, I think we exhausted the tier 8. We're going to tier 9. We've got the Manticore too, which is just an improved version of the Manticore. It has more damage. And yep. 5% kinetic, 10% thermal. Uh, I think it's the same. Uh, Close cloaking device reactivation delay. Okay, it can cloak faster. And 99 large torpedo power grid. Oh, okay. This one can fit 
battleship size modules in as in torpedo launchers as in manticore uh, the standard version of manticore could fit the cruiser battle cruiser sized module of uh, torpedo launchers which was the medium launcher moving on to blackbird 2 covert ops uh, this is uh, your recon it's just like the falcon but uh, more like it should be the rook but it's not the rook because it can also cloak the rook was uncloaky um, more bonuses on jamming uh, and more bonuses on sensor strength and missile torpedo damage okay <coughs> sorry there my vo my voice is starting to crack up we've been talking non-stop here the naga 2 which is an improved version of the naga uh, again, battleship sized guns, uh, some more DPS options, and of course, I think more resistances. No, they're pretty much the same. Oh, I think seven, seven, seven. Yeah. The improvement comes with extra DPS from that seven, uh, the seventh um, high slot, meaning it can carry up to six, seven weapons as opposed to the standard dagger, which carries only six. The Ferox Guardian. Uh, which is the tank version and the fleet tank version of the uh, Ferox, uh, the battle cruiser equivalent uh, of the MOA, which was the cruiser sized tank Guardian. Drake Logistics. I do not understand for the sake of argument this role of battle cruiser logistics, but again, uh, the only um, argument that I can see is the fact that cruiser logistics are crappy because they don't have tech 2 variants and uh, in a, they, they, they can get one shot I mentioned before Sov mentioned it before uh, they get one shotted uh, <laughs> so probably in battleship size fleets you'd want to use this but again having battle cruisers as logistics makes no sense to me the Scorpion. Have you finished with the battleships? Uh, with the battle cruisers? I think so. Scorpion, the first battleship that we'll see. Awesome design. It used to look crappier back in the days when Evil Lion launched. Now it has been redesigned, I think, for some years now. It's a jamming battleship. <laughs> it combines the perks of the Blackbird to jam enemy ships uh, and has like turret damage or torpedo. Okay, this is something interesting. So you can fit the Scorpion however you like. It does not care. <laughs> you either get turret damage or you get missile torpedo damage. So whatever boats your float. Yep, you got that right. The Rock. The Rock is um, a battleship specialized on railguns. Uh, it can be used with the other um, turret battleships uh, for alpha fleets has bonus to railgun optimal range meaning can be used in alpha snipe fleets shield resistances and that's pretty much it there's no extra damage but you don't need extra damage uh, it downed me I think after, uh, after the Galenta presentation that we did on ship tree you don't need extra damage you've got all the slots possible that's eight the maximum amount of slots uh, that you can have on high and they can all fit guns <laughs> and we finally reached tier 10 which is the condor 2 interceptor which is an upgraded version of the condor interceptor uh, has the same bonuses i believe uh, i'm not i can't tell the difference maybe it's with with the high slots and the We've got 333, and this one has 333 as well. 5% web optimal range. Oh, okay. The bonuses come in optimal range for the stasis web and the warp drive signature radius penalty. And of course, torpedo damage. Whereas the Condor 1 interceptor, I think it was rail guns. Nope, still torpedoes. Well, uh,. So yeah, that's the bonus. It's just the web file optimal range. Remember, we we hit one similar ship here uh, uh, in the Galente tree. Why are these high tier? They're, they're not that good. They're not justified to be this high. <laughs> Again, Cormant covert ops. Uh, we had one in the Galente. We've got the Catalyst covert ops. Why are these here? They can go cloaky, they're destroyers, 
but we've seen cruisers that can go cloaky and they are lower in tech tree. I, I don't get it. I'm sorry. Like the, the destroyer and the frigate on the tier 10 uh, line, they're not justifiable. They're, they've got no reason to be here, I think. We've got cruisers that are cloaky up down below. Um, yeah, my opinion, these, these two uh, should go down below as well. Tier 10, battle cruiser. We've got the Ferox 2 Guardian, which is an upgrade of the Ferox Guardian. And we've got the Mighty Raven. The Mighty Raven is the biggest battleship of the Kaldari. Um, has bonuses to <laughs> missile torpedo damage and activation time. Can cycle faster, shoot faster. A large missile torpedo velocity can shoot further. And flight velocity to have a bit more speed because it's really, I mean, really slow. It's really slow, uh, but it patches, packs a very big punch, uh, especially uh, if I remember correctly. I didn't manage to fly one of these, but I used to fly them a lot back in EVE Online before I quit. Torpedoes were just like, metre mm, D. And. The Raven Striker. Okay, this is something new. I don't think we've seen uh, uh, something similar on the Galenta tree. The Raven Striker. Or, or was it? I think it was the Megathron Striker. Yeah, it was. The, or, or no, it was the Hyperion. Can't remember. We'll have to, uh, to watch after this. Just to compare, because uh, uh, the Raven Striker has large missile torpedo damage 5% and large, uh, large missile torpedo activation and velocity, which is basically the same thing. What? This can't be right. Right? 746. 746. Two drones. Two drones. Torpedo damage. Activation time. Torpedo velocity is there. Flight velocity is there. Overall defense, 66923. Okay, so it's a bit more sturdy. It has just a wee bit more tank. Come on. I had hoped there's like an, a major improvement. Okay, this feels disappointing. I don't think I'm going to go for this one. Ever. <laughs> it has the same stats, I think, just the, the, the resistances are a bit different and probably the HP for, for the shield. If they don't give it like some more bonuses, like to be like a marauder, uh, to enter siege or something, I don't see the role of this ship. Yeah. So this was the Kaldari ship tree. I hope you guys enjoyed our review, our short review, which I think, I hope, it did not turn into another 45 minutes of blob. But thank you guys for watching. A very big shout out to my channel supporters, and I guess I'll see you guys next time uh, with something else. If not, we'll probably touch down on Amar. Cheers. <laughs>